World War III, just the highlights. Uh, good morning, everyone. I thank the Japanese presidency and you personally, Minister Kona, for convening today's briefing. Unfortunately, my country has been affected too. Early this month, we marked the 23rd anniversary of the signing of the Budapest Memorandum on security assurance in connection with Ukraine accession to the NPT. In return to voluntary renunciation by Ukraine of its nuclear arsenal, the free nuclear states committed to respect the independence and sovereignty and the existing borders of Ukraine. The signatories of the memorandum further obliged to refrain from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity or political independence of Ukraine and that none of the weapons will ever be used against Ukraine. <laughs> Let me remind this council that the provision of security guarantees to Ukraine by nuclear states was a precondition for my country's accession to the NPT. And let me also stress that this memorandum is registered with the UN Secretariat in accordance with the Article 102 of the Charter and certified by the Secretary General as an international agreement. However, the obligations set forth in this document were insidiously violated by Russia, one of the signatories and the recipient of the nuclear weapons based in Ukraine until 1994. As a result, my country got fundamental violation of its borders in a blatant show of disregard for norms and principles of international law Charter of the United Nations, Helsinki Final Act, and a number of other agreements, including the Budapest Memorandum. The illegal occupation of Crimea and the ongoing Russian aggression in Donbas, region of Ukraine, have left the low rich uranium research reactor in Sevastopol, two nuclear repositories, and more than 1,200 radionuclide sources without due control of the Ukrainian national regulator. I wish to remind that the legal framework of uh, IAWA safeguards application in Ukraine, including the Autonomous Republic of Crimea and the city of Sevastopol. And when we speak about the importance of preserving and strengthening the nuclear non-proliferation regime, we should also keep in mind that the continuing occupation of the territory of Ukraine by a nuclear weapon state has resulted in de facto expansion of the geographical area of nuclear weapons deployment. The Russian military aggression against Ukraine, as well as systematic provocation by its client, North Korea, have provoked dangerous misbalance in the existing international security system, undermined the effectiveness and reliability of non-proliferation regime. And in order to prevent the world from sliding into the state of lawlessness, we must stand united to ensure respect for international law. We must stand united to ensure responsibility for its violation, no matter whether it was violated by a recognized nuclear weapon state or those unfortunately desperately wishing to gain such a status. And it's not gonna happen. I now give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. And in conclusion, Chairman, I would like to I would like to address Minister Klimkin, who spoke today here. I'd like to advise him when he speaks to the Security Council and in, in his legends that he spoke about what happened in the Ukraine, that he might want to actually keep to the item on the agenda. Thank you. The representative of Ukraine has asked for the floor to make a further statement. Um, thanks, Mr. President. I wanted to use my right uh, to react uh, to what the Russian representative uh, has just said. One point uh, about the proper format uh, addressing different issues. Basically, it was about uh, Russia breaking the Budapest Memorandum and all kind of uh, legal written and unwritten uh, commitments in the sense of creating the atmosphere of impunity, which contributed to the situation where we are now. And uh, 
if uh, you know the moment uh, I were listening to your presentation, uh, Mr. President, uh, and the narrative about the DPRK, it's basically about breaking international law, sanctions, and hostages. It's actually the same uh, narrative what what we have on Russia. You know, breaking international law, sanctions, hostages. So we have one big rock stake, you know, one smaller rock stake. And uh, the difference is actually only, only in scale. But, you know, uh, uh, but I wanted also to react to one point, which is, uh, for me, twisted, irresponsible, and mind-blowing logic. The Russian representative has said that basically North Korean nuclear and missile program, in a way, in answer on the trainings, around the North Korea. Russia were having uh, military drillings. The most, uh, you know, fundamental in scale this year in Belarus, trying to screw everybody up about uh, their goals and, uh, and scale. So following uh, Russian logic, I should now call for, uh, for my country to become, uh, you know, nuclear and to develop a missile program. In a way, uh, it's uh, actually the whole irresponsible logic which could uh, trigger a nuclear race in the whole uh, world tomorrow. So uh, I believe we have to stop trying to find uh, any kind of excuses for any kind of wrong behavior. It, it's my fundamental point. And I wanted to use uh, this opportunity simply to make this point again. Thanks, Mr. President. The representative of Russian Federation has asked for the floor to make a further statement. I give him the floor. <coughs> Thank you very much, President. I'll be very brief. I'm not going to get into a discussion of the substance of what the Ukrainian delegate has said. I'm, I'm pleased to see that there are many different nations in the room today because they have the opportunity to see the lack of respect for the Ukrainian delegation to the UN, to the UN Security Council and the other member states. I thank you very much.